Ariana Grande's alleged stalker has reportedly threatened to kill her after showing up at her Hollywood Hills residence during the early hours of September 9th, according to new court documents. And I'm trying to just say it and like let go of that trauma because I do have a lot to say. Ariana Grande has had a bunch of different stalkers. Some of them make creepy videos singing to her and others break into her home and threaten to kill her. Recently, the same man out to get her did it again. So let's get into it. Recently, Ariana Grande had a stalker break into her home, violate a restraining order, and do this all on her birthday. Unfortunately, Ariana Grande has had a bunch of different stalkers throughout the years. Today, we're going to be talking about some recent events and a couple of her stalkers, but I must acknowledge Tim Normanden. He is one of Ariana's most popular stalkers, which is so sad to think about, but he's 31 years old and he admitted to harass her and sending her eight candles, sending her a pumpkin. He sent her a $200 anklet. This man had a beyond sick obsession with Ariana and he actually had a Facebook page where he posted a bunch of videos and just like talked about her all the time. And oh my gosh, I'm like over here like about to throw my glasses off. Oh my gosh. After, when I was doing research for this video, I found a video of this guy singing to ariana and i just like i have to play for you guys because it's so incredibly cringe that i died a little bit inside ariana grande are you getting what i say ariana grande would you consider what i say Ariana Grande, I've been calling your name. If I was so fortunate to have such money and fame, well, if to your eyes I had a more glamorous frame, tell me, my dear, would you respond the same way? Would you reject all my love, my care, and my worth? This greatest love I give, would you value more than dirt? Now let me say this with your understanding that it's fully in love. And see me eye to eye because I don't think I'm above. Your talent includes more than just singing and stripping. You claim that you love but seem not treating but tricking. Did he just call Ariana Grande a stripper? It is so cringe. I had to make you guys watch that with me. Literally, articles have written about that song that he wrote for Ariana. And I also found that a court clinician did say that Timmy has a number of mental health issues, including delusional disorder, which is really unfortunate. I mean, mental health, that's a struggle that, you know, everyone has a personal struggle with mental health, but it doesn't excuse like harassing someone and sending these unwanted gifts to Ariana's house. But as I mentioned earlier, recently someone broke into her home on her freaking birthday. And this wasn't the first time that this man, Aaron Brown, broke into Ariana Grande's home. He's literally Literally 23 years old. I don't understand why there's this sick obsession. But again, mental health is a huge issue. It's just never an excuse. So back in 2021, during August and September, this man Aaron kept showing up to Ariana's home nearly every day, sometimes multiple times a day. At around 10 p.m. on September 9th, Aaron showed up to Ariana's home with a large hunting knife. And when he was asked to leave by security, he became combative. He then returned in the early hours of September 10th with the knife once again, telling the guards that he's going to effing kill them and Ariana. So at this point, the police are called because this man has a knife, has threatened to kill Ariana Grande, and is just showing up at the home. Well, Aaron actually fled on foot from the scene, so the police had to go and chase him down, which eventually they did take him into custody. When Aharon showed up to Ariana's home again, he allegedly showed up with a large hunting knife, and when security asked him to leave, he became combative and screamed, I'll kill you and her. 
The police actually took this situation very seriously and they recognized that he was a threat. A law enforcement officer also filed a separate declaration claiming that he was scared that the stalker would get out of jail and go right back to Ariana Grande's house. A law enforcement officer also filed a declaration saying he feared the alleged stalker would be released from jail and therefore the restraining order was essential. According to TMZ, Aharn is still in custody and is being charged with two felony counts of making criminal threats. It's unclear if Ariana Grande was home during the September 2021 incident. Uh, TMZ reported that she never came out during the altercation or during Aaron Brown's arrest, but she did file a temporary restraining order. And when we got that restraining order, we learned a lot more about what Aaron had been putting Ariana through. In these legal documents, Ariana Grande explained that Aaron had been terrorizing her for seven months. And of course, everything escalated and peaked on September 9th when he showed up to her home threatening to kill her with a knife. And it's a big deal that this man is threatening to take her life because it's not like it's an online comment or a nasty email. This person is actively showing up to the home and is within, I guess, the Hollywood Hills area and has easy access to get to Ariana and to... I don't know, one day try to harm her? It looks like this restraining order that Ariana Grande filed protects her entire family, including her husband, which I would be worried if I were her husband, because what do you do in this kind of situation? You can't really protect her. A law enforcement officer also filed a declaration saying he feared the alleged stalker would be released from jail and therefore the restraining order was essential. According to TMZ, Aharn is still in custody and is being charged with two felony counts of making criminal threats. In this restraining order, we learned that Ariana Grande wrote that the fact that Aaron Brown has been regularly coming to my home for over six months terrifies me. Based on his threats, I am fearful for my safety and the safety of my family. She also added that she feared without this protection order that Aaron Brown would attempt to physically harm or murder her or members of her family, maybe her husband or brother. Who knows what this sick person wants? And ultimately, the judge sides with Ariana Grande. Like, thank God. God, can you imagine if the judge said like, no, like deal with it. I would be so pissed. And it looks like it's a five year restraining order, which I'm like five years, like he'll be 28 at that point. So hopefully he would have moved past this stalking Ariana Grande phase, but like who really knows? But unfortunately, I don't think it's a phase at all because on her 29th birthday, recently, like a week ago from the time that I'm filming this, this stalker, Aaron Brown, showed up again. So Friday at 2 a.m., Aaron Brown was arrested because he showed up to Ariana Grande's home on her 29th birthday. Sources with direct knowledge tell TMZ that on Sunday, Aaron Brown somehow got into Ariana Grande home. She was not home at the time, but the security alarm went off and the cops showed up and arrested him. Actually, at this point, Aaron Brown was supposed to turn him in days before because he had already violated the protection order, which it's like there's not much protection here if it doesn't actually stop these people from coming and trying to find her. So even though he's got this restraining order against him, he tried to find Ariana Grande and he got very close. That's very scary. He got close. He was supposed to turn himself in on Tuesday for violating the restraining order, but then he traveled to California and broke into her home, which I think the traveled part right here is very interesting because it makes me think like, okay, he traveled to wherever like she was to maybe get close to, to her, which is just incredibly scary. And then of course on Sunday he showed up and the cops were called and he was arrested. Thankfully he was charged this time and hopefully he's charged a little extra more because he violated this restraining order. But he was charged for stalking, burglary, damaging power lines, violation of the court order and obstruction. He has pled not guilty, but like, man, you seem guilty. And the power lines, I wonder if he like tried to destroy some power lines to the house or some electricity or to the alarm system, like what is this guy plotting? It sounds so evil. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there have been plenty of stalkers in Ariana Grande's life. Like 
Tim, we've got Aaron, who is active, and there's also another guy named Fidel, who cannot come within 100 yards of Ariana Grande or her mother or her mother's home for the next five years. In March 2020, Fidel was arrested at Ariana Grande's home after sneaking onto her property and leaving a threatening letter at the door. He also followed a delivery truck onto her property and went through her trash before attempting to approach the singer. The obsessed fan then knocked on her front door to deliver her a love letter. However, the note was no love letter. Through the handwritten note, Fidel wrote how he wanted to end Ariana Grande's life. Two months later, a judge granted both Ariana Grande and her mother a five-year restraining order against the unstable fan. That's how they, they classify him. It also looks like he cannot contact them on social media, so maybe he was doing some social media harassment as well. At the end of the day, it is not okay to go and stalk anyone. I mean, at all. And I can't imagine how these celebrities feel. I mean, thankfully, they can go and hire security. But even with the best security out here, they're still breaking into these homes. And it sounds like Aaron Brown really feel like he's determined to go and get to Ariana Grande, which that's scary. She's just like living in fear at this point. And you guys know I had my own experience with like stalkers and stuff. And it's just like, it's really scary. If you're if you're walking your dog and you walk the same route every single day, like you need to be mindful. If you're a regular person, like people will start catching on and some weirdos may see you and try to stalk you. But here's my email. If you guys have any other video ideas for me, let's go ahead and open this PO box package item. It looks like it's from Beverly Hills from a company called Kaito. Kaito. Um, okay. Everything is packaged so nicely, too. They have really cute business cards, too. It's called Kayoto, and it looks like it's a cup, which I'm really excited for. Um, here's a note. Sloan, thank you for all your amazing videos. Here's a gift from my business, Kaitiko. Kaitiko, you told me you liked Eeyore. Enjoy. Oh, my gosh. Eeyore, I'm so excited. So, actually, someone gave me an Eeyore, like, as one of my first, like, P.O. Box package gifts, and I still have it, and it's, like, so soft. So, oh, my gosh, let me see what this is about to be about. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like I didn't really grow up with that much Disney stuff, but I always liked the Eeyore guy because he's like so depressed and sad and I just like relate to it. Oh my <gasps> look at this. What the <gasps> and it has my name on it too, SL04N. Some Eeyore cup. Wow, and the top is so wow, and the top is so pretty. Look at the top. <gasps> I love the top of this cup. It is so cool. And she or they even gave me um some matching straw to go with it. I love the blue, the blue straw with it. Wow, definitely go and check out their business because this is really nice and I love how it's custom and everything. So cute. The top is like, I mean, that's it. The top is like loving it. So pretty. Wow, thank you so much. Definitely go and check out. I don't know what this is for. I was like looking at this, like what is this for? Yeah, this is nice. Uh, this is nice. I love that. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Go and check out their company. Everything will be listed below. And I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Bye guys.